A few days later, Mary hurried to the hill country of Judea to the town. So, Gabriel's told her, you're gonna be pregnant by Holy Spirit, and he leaves her. So, a few days later, Mary hurried to the hill country of Judea to the town where Zechariah lived. She entered the house and greeted Elizabeth. At the sound of Mary's greeting, Elizabeth's child leapt within her, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth gave, the, gave a glad cry and exclaimed to Mary, God has blessed you above all women, and your child is blessed. Why am I so honoured that the mother of my Lord should visit me? When I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. You are blessed because you believe that the Lord would do what he said. Now, something rather remarkable has happened here. Picture the scene if you can. Now, there'll be a number of you that come from cultures, you'll get this straight away. There'll be some of us, like myself, who, you know, takes us some time to wrangle our way around this. But when the younger person has come to an older person's house, you honour the home. Yes, you're in the, the, the you honour the older person. Yes, and uh, so this is exactly the same here. Mary's come to her older cousin Elizabeth's home, and the idea she's to to honour. By the way, it wasn't like it was just round the corner, or she could jump in a car and go and see her. We're talking probably a good seventy mile trek to go and see her cousin. So this is quite something. And so then what you then get was, so Mary wants to go off and see Elizabeth and honour in the home. But before she gets that, why do we think Mary wants to go and see Elizabeth? Is it to verify the angel Gabriel's story that she's pregnant? I would struggle with that. I do wonder if she was going there to say, well, <coughs> my cousin-in-law, Zachariah, is a priest. He's bound to understand what this is all going on. I think I'll go and see them. Yeah? It's a bit weird, isn't it? You're going to be pregnant. Angels arrived, you're going to get pregnant, virgin. I really could do with somebody else unpacking this for me. Let me go and see the person who probably should know the breast, the priest of the temple. <laughs> like Zachariah knew what was going on. I thought that was quite funny. We only ever see in part or know in part. No one individual never truly knows exactly. That's why we're to collectively together as a church, yes? And we work together. So she turns up to honour and she sends a greeting. And we don't see what the greeting is, but the greeting would have been towards uh, uh, the house. One of, you know, hi, I'm Mary, very humble, honoured to meet you, that sort of thing. And then so what we get is a massive turnaround. Massive, immediately. All revealed by the activity of the Holy Spirit. John, which John is his name, by the way, it's in Elizabeth at this point, leaps at the sound of Mary's greeting. All done by the Holy Spirit. And actually, it's Elizabeth that is honoured to have this lowly cousin, because do you remember Mary comes from nothing? Remember, she's a complete nobody? And yet Elizabeth, who is of a royal line of priests, is honoured to have her younger cousin, who's nobody, come into her home. Why? Well, because Mary's got the Lord within her. Yes? Now, I know you'll know this, but I think you've got to understand the significance of this moment. It's, culturally, it should have been that way round. And dare I, as I said, there are plenty of you that come from cultures that get that, yeah? But wow, for Elizabeth to go, no, it's me, that's, who am I that I am honoured? That, 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 that the mother of my Lord is here in my house. That's because Mary had Jesus with her. The Lord was with her, and it changed the atmosphere. 
Now, we're all blessed because those of us that are believers in Jesus Christ have the Holy Spirit living in us, yes? Us who submit ourselves entirely to him have the Holy Spirit living in us. So we have the Lord that we carry into all and every situation. So we could be turning up into a place where we think we are the nobodies. But actually, because we carry the Lord with us, the atmosphere changes. Does that make sense? I remember, used to remember years ago, in my old job, I used to, um, I used to sort of, I've said this before now, and I keep saying it. Remember my job when I went through lots of, lots of, there was stuff that you just, oh, you just usual politics of work life, yeah? All right, I, need I say more to anybody else? And you used to sit there and think, oh, go up those three steps into the glass doors. I still remember the whole thing. And I went for a period of that. And I used to think as you walk up those steps and walk through those doors, you sort of left God behind. Does that make sense? That's what it felt like. Well, God's not in here, but actually carried God in. And then there was times in certain circumstances that the atmosphere changed, not because of me, but because of whom I carried in as such. And when you acknowledge that, the atmosphere changed. For the better, I'm glad to say, by the way. So for some of us, we need to understand that. It's not always simply that, oh, we could be just like Mary. We might be going to a place where we think we have no authority. And we within ourselves have no authority. But we carry the authority of the living Lord that changes the atmosphere. And so we could have an Elizabeth-type person who then suddenly says, I am honoured to have you here, not the other way around. Seeing it from a heavenly perspective, seeing our lives to expect the unexpected. And of course, this is the best thing. You are blessed, Mary, because you believe that the Lord would do what he said. It's Elizabeth saying, Mary, you're blessed because you accepted in faith, you accepted God's call on your life. That is why you're blessed. And Elizabeth has clearly got a husband who's clear evidence, very silent, but clear evidence for six months, that when you don't accept what God is saying, a bit of discipline goes on for a while. Yeah? Zachariah, silence. For six months now, Zachariah has been silent. And then the wife in the house goes, Amen. But because Mary accepted the call, accepted it in faith, was not cynical about it, she is blessed. So we then get this in strange interruption in the story, which is Mary's song of praise, or the Magnificat, as it is known. And uh, Mary responded, Oh, how my soul praises the Lord, how my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he took notice of this lonely servant girl, and from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one is holy, and he has done great things for me. He shows mercy from generation to generation to all who fear him. His mighty arm, his mighty arm has done tremendous things. He has scattered the proud and haughty ones. He has brought down princes from their thrones and exalted the humble. He has lifted the hungry with good things. Sorry, he has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away with empty hands. He has helped his servant Israel and remembered to be merciful. For he made this promise to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. A real praise. First and foremost, she notes on a personal level that God has lifted her up. It is, she's come from a nowhere place and God has honoured her. Now, I'm not going to get into how some people take Mary into a much more deified view. I don't agree, you know, clearly I'm not agreeing with that because Mary's no different from the rest of us. We're all blessed and highly favoured, amen? 
because we all went through that. I've done about 100 times. I look back at the sermon I did last week. I think, gosh, how many more times could I repeat the fact that you're favoured, God is with you? And yeah, amen? And have you experienced it this week? Oh, well. So she takes herself up and then she talks about how great God is. And he's done great things from one generation to the next. And then she talks about the strength. And actually in this whole Magnificat is the divine warrior motif. It's looking at the Lord as a warrior. Yeah, and you should all be looking up right now. Okay, it's all in here. So it's amazing how that one verse is laced throughout the entire Bible. That whole look that the Lord is a warrior and what he can do. But she also takes this into further than that. Because when she then talks about princes from their thrones and the hungry with good things, this is not about within their own nation. What she's understanding here is, is that then she then trips in verse 54 to, he has helped the servant Israel. Israel meaning the nation. So it takes her from her role into recognising this has a massive role for the whole of the nation. And the nation itself, which is currently oppressed by princes who are in their thrones, by those who are taking wealth from the nation of Israel, he's going to change that around. Do you see that? And that's what that's about. But then the funniest thing is, she has no understanding that this baby isn't just for the Jewish people. If you read that, she's still trapped within her own uh, socio-political viewpoint. She doesn't understand yet. And as I said, I come back to, sometimes we know in part, and we only see in part. So where we have this Mary thinking she has it all, she has it all as in she has Jesus inside of her, but she doesn't understand all. We get that when he's like in his 33 and he's, starting, he's doing his ministry. She still goes with the family to try and drag him out because they think he might have gone a little bit, um, a little bit mad, to be honest with you, because they can see the danger he's getting himself into. So they still, she still didn't understand, even 30-odd years later. But anyway, verse 56 to... So then Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then went back to her home. Yeah, I want to stop on that. What do you think for three months Mary stayed with Elizabeth and Zachariah, yeah? This is a real question today. Actually getting a real question. What do you think they talked about for three months? They've both had experiences of angels. Do you think they all just turned up and said, oh, oh, I like that bit of wallpaper on your room. That's a bit nice, isn't it? Oh, you've changed that to Cousin Elizabeth. What do you think they might have discussed? This is, there is no right or wrong answer. Well, it could be wrong answers, but quite frankly, this is a hypothetical question. What would you talk about for three months? about um, how their lives have changed and what's going to happen in the future. Yeah, okay. Oh, that's good, thank you. Probably the baby's kicking. The baby's kicking? Yeah, yeah there'll be some proper, oh, feel that. Go on, Elizabeth, uh, go on, Mary, feel that. Check that out. I can see a foot. Is it not true? Mothers can only talk about one thing, babies. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> uh, there are stones outside, should you wish to, on, and, and just to point out that those who are without sin may cast the first stone. So that's none of us. Right, next. Come on, think about it. This is... <sighs> stuff. Yes, Belinda, thank you. They might also take a glance at Zachariah and say, wow, what's going on here? Mm. Yeah, maybe feeling sorry for him. Or and, um, Elizabeth might say, thank goodness he's quiet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel sorry for Zachariah now. 
I, I, I just sat there and I thought, yeah, it, it dawned on me, that innocuous little verse that she stayed for three months and then returned home. What did you do for three months? This is big stuff. Did they search the you know, scripture? Did they, did, they, did they sort of go to the temple and grab the scroll, maybe have a quick look? Or, you know, is Zachariah sort of like him trying to signal various things to them? Well, Elizabeth and, and, and Mary talk about, I mean, they must have talked about some of the practicalities for, um, for Mary, because A, she's not married, yeah, and she's pregnant. So by the time she goes back, she's three months pregnant at least. And so there's all that sort of, okay, well, how are you going to deal with this? Sorry, Doral? Is it time to start buying the baby clothes? Is it, yeah, time to start going down to mother care, yeah, and buying the baby clothes, yeah? <laughs> but do you see the whole, there must have been a big, you wouldn't be just sitting there for three months talking about normal life, would you? You can't do. Something really unexpected has happened. If something like that had happened to you, would you sit there quietly saying nothing? No? Just something to mull over. It's good to do some hypothetical thinking and dreaming. And I bet some mornings I must have woken up going, is this real? Did that actually happen? Oh, just like it. So let's carry on with the rest of the story. When it was time for Elizabeth to be born, uh, when it was time for Elizabeth's baby to be born, she gave birth to a son. And when her neighbours and relatives heard that the Lord had been merciful to her, everyone rejoiced with her. When the baby was eight days old, they all came for the circumcision ceremony. They wanted to name him Zachariah after his father. But Elizabeth said, no, his name is John. What? They exclaimed. There is no one in your family by that name. So they used gestures to ask the baby's father what he wanted the name to name him. He motioned for a writing tablet, and to everyone's surprise, he wrote, his name is John. Instantly, Zachariah could speak again, and he began praising God. Awe fell upon the whole neighborhood, and the news of what had happened spread throughout the Judean hills. Everyone who heard about it reflected on these events and asked, what will this child turn out to be? For the hand of the Lord was surely upon him in a special way. Let's take that whole scene from a different image. Clarence is back. Well, here we go. Look at this. I love you fickle people. You're rejoicing with her for one moment and then you're questioning her like she's lost the plot the next when she comes and says, no, 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 his name's John. <sighs> she's not following the social norms and you get really, really, really stressed out about it. She's not going along with the expected and you can't seem to cope with it. Oh, you make me laugh. And then the next minute, you're completely in awe when Zachariah, so you have to go to the man. Why do you think you have to go to the man? Why couldn't you have just believe the woman? And she goes, his name is John. Did you notice that? It's is John. Both past, present and future. Is, now, his name is John. Zachariah clearly didn't muck about. He knew it was John. Now, that was a man who had spent nine months in discipline, total silence, had to quietly reflect on what was going on and what it all meant. Wish humans would try that a little bit more often, being silent before God. It's amazing what you'll learn. Yeah? It's an amazing moment. There's nothing wrong going against the social norms. God doesn't seem to follow the social norms that often. We've noticed it for a few millennia. B, 
but it was an amazing time. You should have seen when that baby was born, there was real rejoicing within the family. There was more rejoicing in heaven, I tell you that now. It happened. Yes, John's here. That means the Lord is coming. We get excited in heaven. You should be getting excited here on earth. Because we don't need him. We're already with the Lord. You need him. Clarence had to make one return, didn't he? But this is the fact for me that Zachariah, finally, after nine months of silence, wasn't going to muck about. He wasn't going to argue anymore. It, almost that sense of being silent meant he had to listen. Not just to Elizabeth, but he had to listen to God. If you wake up every morning knowing you can't speak, and you know why you can't speak, what else do you do? You listen, don't you? And it was discipline. And I believe it was discipline for a good It doesn't look nice, and it does say to us, doesn't it, in the Bible, when we're in discipline, it doesn't feel very nice. But the Father only disciplines those whom he loves. So you might be going through some real rough time at the moment, and it could be actual discipline from the Lord. Maybe it's time to be listening to what he's trying to teach you. Amen? Yeah, I know it's Christmas and we're meant to be cheerful, but... And then Zechariah, his father, was filled with the Holy Spirit and gave this prophecy. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has visited and redeemed his people. He has sent us a mighty saviour from the royal line of his servant David, just as he promised through his holy prophets long ago. Now we will be saved from our enemies and from all who hate us. He's been merciful to our ancestors by remembering his sacred covenant, the covenant he swore with an oath to our ancestor Abraham. We have been rescued from our enemies so we can serve God without fear, in holiness and righteousness for as long as we live. And you, just imagine that moment for a minute. You're the father, proud father, and you look at your child and you go, and you, my little son, will be called the prophet of the Most High because you will prepare the way for the Lord. You will tell his people how to find salvation through forgiveness of their sins. Because of God's tender mercy, the morning light from heaven is about to break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide us to the path of peace filled with the Holy Spirit gives this great prophetic word but I want to note again not once has he realised it is from beyond the Jewish people he's still trapped within his own current understanding of what this looks like because they um, are also oppressed they, his view of this savior was to come and take away the enemies i.e the romans and all of that to whip them out of the land so they ha can have the place all to themselves again not once is there an understanding which is clearly evident in the old testament scriptures that actually this is this saviour is not about to whipping away human people. It is about dealing on a much larger scale of salvation for the entire creation, basically. So actually, Zachariah was running in the lines of the social norms and was expectant of what he thinks is meant to happen. Does that make sense? His expectations of what this saviour is meant to do were still limited by what he saw before him. There was not a sense that this baby was vastly bigger and wider than just his small expectation. And for us, it's the same. When I talk about us expecting the unexpected, what we're really sort of, I believe, that God is saying to us is, could you try and break out of 
your, your mindset, that you think things go this way. When it says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind in Romans, it is sometimes our minds need to be completely renewed from what we think we know. And it's in that, when we break what we think is expected, the unexpected occurs. Well, we'll class it as unexpected. <laughs> right from the beginning of this Advent journey, I said, let's not go along with the route of the same old, same old. Who's got all their presents so far for Christmas? Yeah, yeah we're all shopped and bought, we're done. Yeah. I'd like to take full credit for it. But that would be a lie. Yes, Ian. So, yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. I got well organised. So, but we're all falling into that trap, didn't we? You've got to do the same thing. Got to get the present. Now, I'm not saying don't buy presents for people. Okay, this is not a word from the Lord. Get out of spending money. But what I'm saying is it's about us, as I said, going into our workplaces going into the Christmas parties. Yeah, who's got workplace Christmas parties going on? Some of these days, they happen in January, I've noticed now. They did with us in our last few years, my old place, it limped into January. I think it's because it's cheaper in the hotels. So, but don't walk down the hole ex expecting it to be the same. Walk around with eyes open to do with the unexpected. Let's not be Zachariah, shall we? So there was nothing wrong with what he said, but again, it was only in part. It wasn't the whole picture. And then verse 80. John grew up and became strong in spirit, and he lived in the wilderness until he began his public ministry to Israel. Seeing this is my last time for uh, teaching this Christmas, uh, Pastor David is preaching next week. Yeah, here we go again. <laughs> I did another one for you, David. I'll just tick it off. I want us to note something. Throughout the entire three weeks, we've been looking at this, this book in Luke. John grew up in the Holy Spirit, verse 80. Zachariah was filled with the Holy Spirit in verse 67. Elizabeth filled with the Holy Spirit in verse 51. Mary pregnant through the Holy Spirit in verse 35. The promise to John was filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth in verse 15. Do you get the image? The Holy Spirit, he is all over this event. The people were obedient people. They prayerful people. And so they submitted to the Holy Spirit. Yes, it took a bit more of a mighty discipline for Zechariah to get it. But the Holy Spirit, he was all over this. What should this say to us today? John 3.8 says, The wind blows wherever it wants, just as you can hear the wind, but can't tell where it comes from or where it is going. So you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. I don't know about you, but the wind, um, I, was, um, I took a funeral on, uh, on Thursday, and uh, it was, um, we was in the cemetery afterwards, and um, it was quite windy. So standing outside for a couple of hours in the wind, I could feel the wind, really feel the wind, it was cold, but really feel the wind, but you know, there for, for, the, for those that were grieving and they need to, to and that was fine. That's not, I'm not complaining about being there, but you could feel the wind. And there was one minute I felt it on the back of my neck, and the next minute I felt it to the side of me, yeah? And that's what was going on. But I couldn't tell where it was coming from, yeah? Couldn't wait for it, but I could feel its effects. In the trees, we could see the effects. In our clothing, we could feel it as it was flapping our clothing. And that's the Holy Spirit. That's what he's like. We can't always tell where he's coming from. We can't always tell where he's going. But boy, can we feel his effects, yes? When 
we're willing to stand almost out in that open, barren land and allow him to do it. Allow him to be unexpectant as to where he's working. Say God doesn't follow the social norms. We've got God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, yes? The Holy Spirit most certainly is the one who really doesn't follow the social norms. Yes, he's sent by the Father through the Son, but he is equally as God, and he doesn't follow any norms. And there's nothing wrong with tradition, there's nothing wrong with sticking to things, but we have to be expectant, amen? Now, I love that whole scene in the Sunday Club, and the one line that grabbed me the most, which was funny, which I think, oh no, I can't say names, we're being videoed. But one of the children, when they quoted the line, I'm sorry for complaining it was boring. Can we go back to that? Yeah? And we're the same. There is a point we want difference, we want change, we want to see something happen. But boy, oh boy, when it starts happening, we're like, no, 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 that's a bit scary. Sit back down. Can we go back to boring, please? Yeah? It's like the candlelit carol service tonight. It has had the same format, nothing wrong with it. The same format every year because it's not about us, it's about the community and them coming in. But there are times that we're going to have to go, it's got to be changed up. Something different's got to happen. Now that wasn't the reason. We didn't want to just change it for the sake of it. But when Marius wanted to get baptised, God just went, give this a bash. God didn't quite say give this a bash, but I'm just you know, paraphrasing slightly. And we tested it, and I tested it with the team, I tested it with some others in the prayer tower. We tested the spirit in that, which one should always do. Yeah, if I'm honest with you, tonight, I don't know how it's going to go. And if I'm honest with you, I'm a little bit, oh, apprehensive about it. Because believe it's of God, there's one person who ain't going to like it, is he? Satan. And he's going to use people to sort of undermine it. Yes? So let's pray against that. And I'm apprehensive because how will we receive? Well, I don't really, shouldn't really care. Because if this is what God wants, which is what we believe, let's go for it. Let's not go for boring. Amen? Amen? Good, thank you very much. Let's not go for safe life. Let's go for the unexpected. Amen? Amen. Wouldn't it be amazing to see everybody that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Saviour tonight get down on their knees and submit their lives? And then we're here till gone midnight baptising tons of people. Yeah? Yeah? You have to miss your dinner afterwards. Oh, look. Have you got cheese and biscuits lined up? Forget it. But do you see what I mean? Let's expect the unexpected. Not just for tonight, but forever. Let's not rust, rest with the boring. Let's go where the spirit blows. And that does mean we're not mavericks. We go and do it all off one of us on our own. We need to test it. But let's go with it. Let's see what he's doing. You with me on this journey? Yeah. It's a scary journey. No, no, for one minute, am I saying it's a nice, gentle journey to go on? But seeing God the Father, Chesed, his faithfulness, who's never let us down, amen? amen? It's always with us in the midst of it. Surely we should be able to go, yes, let's expect the unexpected. And to experience the unexpected, we have to be born of the Spirit. We can no longer allow our lives to be led by what we, the social cultural norms of our society. We have to be led by the Spirit. And to be honest, it's easier said than done at times. But God wants to take us there all the time. Now, most of us were all led by the Spirit, but he wants to do so much more. And I've just remembered that fourth prophecy at the back says, listen, listen, just, sorry, I just realised how it's so much related to the sermon. Listen, listen, just listen. There's going to be mountains that you're going to have to climb. It's not going to be an easy journey. 
but he's with us. And we've got to do it, was it? Can't do it within our own... Um, I'm going to run up there and read it. Blow it. Excuse me. Yeah, in your own strength, you cannot do it. In your own wisdom, you will fail. There will be resting and hiding places along the way. Let me direct you. I will not force you, but you have to, you have, but you have got to let me be in charge. Just listen. Oh yeah, and earlier on it actually says, I will break the mold and take you to places you've not imagined. Amen? If you've never read that, please read it. It's the fourth one at the back. That's a promise for us as a church. But we have to be expectant for the unexpected. So, Merry Christmas. John. Take a few moments just to reflect on what the Lord is saying to you. Let's just spend some moments in silence. We do hope you've enjoyed and benefited from this presentation. To learn more about what the Bible teaches us and how to apply this to our everyday lives, check out our biblical teaching videos at gbcweb.tv.